Coming up on this episode of the Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise podcast. Why do you think the black churches were not receptive to letting a, a small group of, of NAACP people lead at their church? Why, why do you think that? Welcome to the Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise podcast with Dr. William T. Choctaw, MD, JD. This podcast will inform, educate, and motivate you to live a more healthy, wealthy, and wise life. It's powered by the over 50 years of medical experience of this Yale University Medical School trained surgeon who also received his Juris Doctorate from Western State Law School. He has executive experience as a former mayor of Walnut, California, as a chairman of the nonprofit Servants Armed, and as president of Choctaw Medical Group Incorporated. You've got questions or concerns, he's got answers for both. So let's listen in on an interview already in progress. <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> good morning, Brother West. Good morning. Good morning, Jesse. You know, every every time I say that, uh, I always think of um, uh, the Wild Wild West and uh, uh, and uh, what was his name? Um, he was a Secret Service agent. <laughs> I forget his name, but. Jim. Uh, Jim West, yes. I'm sick of that. <laughs> See, he already knows. <laughs> I know all about the West. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brother West, for joining us this morning. Uh, Jess and I were just commiserating about the, the Democratic uh, Convention that, that's just been going on this past week. And uh, Jess, I, I, I basically just watch it on TV, you know, 24 7 or whatever, Jesse watches it on YouTube and all the other online types of uh, uh, venues available, but we still get the same information. Uh, so what have, have you been watching it uh, this week? Yes, week's? I watched it. Uh, so what, what, what did you think? Well, I thought it was the best one I've ever seen. I've been watching it for quite a few years. Yeah, same here, same here, yeah. same here. So I, I, I'm just anxious to see what's going to happen yes in the next what 70 days right right exactly exactly uh it's 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 an exciting time it's, it's definitely really? an exciting time i guess my first convention i will i remember uh fatty lou hamer and I think this was 64. I was in college, I think. No, I was in high school in 64. Um, but I remember her, she, she brought a, a, a delegation from Mississippi because she felt that they should be seated. And the other delegation from Mississippi didn't want to seat her, you know. Um, and so that was this big fight and, and on and on and on. Uh, but that, that, I think that was probably my first convention. And then I, I saw the, the Hubert Humphrey one, you know, when Johnson said he wasn't going to run. And, of course, Johnson didn't endorse Hubert Humphrey. Johnson, <laughs> Johnson just didn't do anything. And, of course, Hubert, Hubert Humphrey was just destroyed in the general election. I mean, you know, he, 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 he didn't have a choice. He didn't have a chance, really. Well, you know, uh, uh, Johnson, I, I read a backstory on that. He was actually hoping that people would, uh, like, write him in or would... Uh, yeah, come back around and encourage him to, to jump back in because he only jumped out because of you know Vietnam in the situation. Right, right, right. So I, I, I don't want to uh, take up most of your time. So usually the way we do this, we've been doing this about a year and a half now, uh, and basically uh, you can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I, I, I moved to West Covina in '69. Oh, okay, 1969, and, yeah. And uh, my kids were young, going to, going to, I think it was the first, second, and third grade or something like that. And uh, they had a hard time. Uh -huh. they, they came, uh, it was calling names and all that kind of stuff. Really, really, okay. I live north of the freeway, which is a small portion of West Covina. Okay, and then and north was, of the 10 freeway. North of the 10 freeway. Okay, and okay. there was only another black couple that lived north of the time. Ah, uh, okay. And, but my kids had to go to Covina School District. Uh-huh. And the, the other black family, they went to West Covina 
district. Uh, don't ask me where the dividing line was. Got it. Got it. So my kids were the only ones that was going to Covina schools. Got it. And uh, it was pretty rough for them. They got a couple of names and everything. Is that right? And this is I in 1969. Yeah. Okay. And I had to call the NAACP. Okay. It was really rough for my children. So, so that was how you got involved with the NAACP. That's how I got involved with them. Okay. Okay. And so I really got. And really involved them in about 67, 66 or 67. Okay. No, no, I mean, 76 and 77. Okay. My uh, son was playing football, and uh, the kids was calling him names out on the football field. Yes. Into it during the game. Okay. The school wanted to kick him off the football team. So I really got involved with it. And then after that, it just continued. I ran for vice president. and uh, Of the NAACP? Yeah. yeah. That chapter, I, huh? I got um, disturbed because the black churches out here didn't, they didn't uh, volunteer to help. Is they that right? Interesting. And we wa- we wanted to have a place to meet. Yes. We figured the churches would be a nice place for us to have meetings. Well, this is for the local NAACP chapter. Right. Yes. Okay. And I got kind of disturbed. So anyway, it so was, what, let, let me it ask was you. quite a few of the black people. It's, I don't know if you remember them or not. Um, uh-huh. Hank, Hank Williams. Yes, I do remember Dorothy. Hank Williams. Dorothy. Um, yes, I, I know who you're talking about. I don't remember her last name, but I know who you're talking about. And Helen Williams. Okay. Uh, Jimmy Dixon. Yeah, that sounds and, familiar. And, and those people were quite involved, you know. Why, why do you think the black churches were not receptive to letting a, a small group of, of NAACP people meet at their church? Why, why do you think that? I... I, I never understood it. I really didn't understand it. Okay. I think I do now, but I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the, the people that I talk to, not in the church, but black people that I talk to, trying to get them to be members. Yes. They uh, felt, well, I got mine. Um. I know no problem out here in La Poenie, West Covina. California, right? They didn't, they didn't want to start no mess, you know. Are, are you originally from California, brother? No, I'm originally from Ohio. Okay. I came to California on a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> right out of high school. Okay. <laughs> I've been here ever since. Yeah, yeah. That that's where a lot of us got here. <laughs> we came temporarily and never left. <laughs> and, uh, but. Uh, I had a hard time out here too because I didn't understand the black culture out here. Because what what was the difference? So what what were some of the differences? Well, they didn't. For me, being from Ohio, mm-hmm. my grandfather, my and bo- both my grandfathers and my father, we stood up against anything that wasn't right. Yes, and these people out here didn't have that same attitude like discrimination and that sort of thing Uh uh-huh i got mine so i'm not going to get involved because i got mine you know yes 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 that that was very disturbing to me and like i said when i was working i joined the union Mm -hmm. union member i became a union steward okay and the workers there, they didn't want to stand up. Really? Right. Uh, one time, I, I did this because things wasn't right. I shut the factory down. Okay. Because it wasn't right. Yes. And about six months later, 
they called call me in the office and made me a supervisor <laughs> from you know stopping production okay they were smart <laughs> so I, I i became a supervisor and then eventually became a manager so you were a very strong union man oh yes i'm still a strong union man okay so yeah. so you you you're right in in keeping certainly with with where the democrats are now or um you know, presidential candidate Kamala harris that that particularly putting emphasis on unions and how it it protects the middle class um and you build from the middle class up the standard that we make yes in our jobs in the union reflects to everybody else's job okay I mean, even, even if it's not in the same class or job to type, it still <laughs> reflects to the supervisors who are not even, yeah. the managers who are not Yes, even, yeah. And it, it, it goes from there. Well, you know, Brother West, to, to, to emphasize that point, when I I came to California finishing my surgery training, and again, my idea was I'm going to go out and finish up and then I'm going back east and blah, 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 raise the kids back there. I remember when I was a a, a resident supervisor, I'm, I was part of the faculty now at USC, and I, but my, my paycheck came from the county. I mean, I was a county employee, but I was a position and I, you know, didn't get involved with anything outside of outside the operating room. And I remember one day I got my check and I had a raise. And I said, oh my goodness. And so I went out, I went outside of my office and spoke to the secretary and I said, uh, I forget her name now. I said, you know, I, I just got my check and I got a raise. And she says, yes, doctor. She says, you're part of the union. And I said, I am? <laughs> she says, she says, yes, doctor, you're a county employee. <laughs> and as a county employee, you're part of the union. And I said, you know, I've never been to the union. And she said, doctor, it doesn't matter. The union represents you in the union negotiated your raise and I said oh my goodness I, I didn't love this union <laughs> so my point is though just to your point a lot of people like myself at the time didn't appreciate unions or the, the benefit of unions to society to all of us I mean I'm a physician and I had a good salary and all that but, but I had a salary and the union through their negotiation got got me a raise um and i th i think just just to validate what you just said i i've literally experienced that in in my lifetime thank you for listening to the healthy wealthy and wise podcast with dr william t choctaw md jd you can listen again to this and any of the previous episodes leave a comment or pose questions to the doctor by going to www.thwwp.com that's www.thwwp.com and you've got it it's also available wherever you get your podcasts be sure to follow, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Then tune in for the next episode of the Healthy, Wealthy, and Wise podcast with Dr. William T. Choctaw, MD, JD, a production of Changemakers Communications, LLC.